welcome everyone. Today we're going to show you how you can build this medieval style stool. We start by milling our basic components. We'd suggest hardwood. I used cherry, but that was just because I had lots of it laying around. Here's the cut list for those basic components. We'll also put a link in the description below so you can print it out if you like. The first thing we need to do is cut out our two bottom rails. We're going to use two of the spacers we previously cut, along with our center style and two three-quarter inch spacers to find our exact width. Some of our joinery is going to be mortise and tenon. Here's the pattern of where everything needs to be located. Again, we'll put a link in the description below so you can print out a copy for your own use. We carefully lay out the position of the mortises in the four legs and in the two bottom rails. There's lots of ways to make mortises, including mortising machines, jigs for the rotor, but one of the easiest is just using a Forstner bit in your drill press. Just make a little fence, set your depth, and drill away. Because I'm lazy and I have the tools, I just did mine on the CNC machine. I know, it's cheating. The one on the right is the one we did on the drill press. It's not quite as clean, but it's functional. Using a flat top blade on the table saw, we'll cut our tenons. We'll set our blade height to one quarter of an inch and remove that from each side, leaving a one quarter inch wide tenon. For the depth, we'll use our fence and set it to remove exactly three quarters of an inch of material. We'll readjust the height and remove just enough material to fit the width of the mortise. You may want to creep up on your heights to make sure you get the perfect fit. Round over those corners with a rasp and check your fit. We wanted to have a little bit extra fun with the bottom rail, so we engraved a design on it and cut a little shape to carve out on the bandsaw just to give it a little bit of flavor. Now we're going to shape the legs. The top of the legs need to be two and a half inches wide. I'm going to cut it most of the way down with the table saw, making sure I don't go too far. Then with a little homemade paper jig, I did a design and cut it out on the bandsaw and cleaned it up on the sander. Now we're going to work on the seat slats. We're going to round over one end on each of them. The other end we're going to trim at a 45. But not all the way, we're going to leave a little 1 8 inch ledge at the top of each one. You'll want to creep your way up to that setting just to make sure it's correct. Now we're going to do the drilling. Using the pattern, we're going to lay out where each hole needs to be. I made a little shop made fence with a stop block so I could get the holes exactly where I need them to be. I used a 5 16 brad point bit to drill the holes. And yes, my arm was in the way for all the video. We're going to drill two holes in each leg, two holes in the center style, and two holes in each of the seat slats. Now we're going to glue up those seat assemblies. Add glue to your mortise and tenons, and we're going to use those spacers to make sure that everything glues up square and nice and at the proper distances. Glue up both of your leg assemblies and leave them to dry. Now is an important step. We're going to put the spacers back in and we're going to trim each of the legs to 32 and a half inches tall. That way they're both exactly the same and everything is level and ready for the next step. Here's the hardware list we're going to need. Again, we'll put a link in the description below. We're going to need some threaded rod, some brass cap nuts, and some brass washers. The threaded rod I bought came in three foot lengths. So using a Dremel, I trimmed it to the proper length. Now we're going to do an initial assembly. We're going to start with the bottom of the legs. Then we're going to do the seat slats that get spaced between the legs and the center style. We're going to do both sides, three per side. If 
Finally, we're going to insert the center rod to lock everything together. Everything looks like it's fitting and moving perfectly. Now we get to have some fun with the top rails. We cut ours a little oversized to allow for design choices. You can do whatever you like. You can make them wider, thinner, engraved, carved, whatever floats your boat. Just have fun with it. We laid out where the holes needed to go and drilled them on the one side, a little bigger hole on the other side for the head of the screw. Also, don't forget to drill a little bit of a hole in the end of the legs and the style so you don't accidentally crack your wood while putting the screws in. Just remember that once you install that though, those two legs are now locked together. Using some glue and screws, we joined them together. I wanted to plug the holes on top, but I didn't have a 3 8 plug cutter. So I did the next best thing and instead of going and buying one, I just cut some out on the CNC, trimmed them on the table saw, and they were ready to install. I disassembled everything again, gave it all a final sanding. That night I was spraying some other products with lacquer, so I sprayed the stool with lacquer too. Now it was just reinstalling those rods for final assembly. If you have any questions about building your own stool, let me know and have fun with it.